welcome back everybody welcome to the next episode this is going to be the episode where we install the fuel cell we're going to go over some specifics i got some comments that we're going to go over as well we'll show you the new fuel fill line that i got that is rated for the ethanol fuels that we commonly use nowadays it's also a lot stronger than this fire resistant hose which has uh, seen better days this is super duper not flexible anymore same thing with this vent line as we talked about earlier as it got older it dried out and you can see it's got little coatings of oil on it so we're definitely not going to use it but for routing purposes we will next thing let's talk about this this is our new fuel fill hose similar to the original which is a it's a marine rated you'll see in most cases I gotta flip it around I think the designation is gone on it but what you'll see and apologize I'm having to read it backwards but the J1527 it's gonna be your fire resistant rating for marine use you'll also see some of the US Coast Guard uh, insignias here as well so it's important to, to go with the marine rated because it's fire resistant hosing uh, fire resistant hose hopefully you never have to worry about that but if you did you got the good stuff yeah this one in particular is a Sierra brand but interesting enough it's uh, made in Italy so that's kind of cool and it comes in a uh, 12 and a half foot 12 and a half foot section it's roughly about a hundred bucks for this hose we'll be using just under eight feet of it we'll measure it out perfectly but if you measure out the original that was in here with these appropriate bends you get just right at about seven foot yours will probably vary a little bit all right so anyway that's going to be the new fuel fill let's talk about what we're going to use i've got some hole saws here we're going to drill out more than likely probably keep this area in the bilge clear so we're going to try to do the vent line which is going to be on the outside so we'll do the vent line as close as we can to that stringer but not too close about yay here and then we'll do the bigger um, we'll talk about that too that's actually another thing I was just thinking about this is actually a two inch line just in case you're curious I do have a two inch hole saw but you don't want it to be like super tight in here and rub up so I actually have a two and one eighth hole saw that I'm going to use and I'll, I'll just keep it roughly right in the middle here and the the reason I haven't permanently attached the fuel cell in there is because when you use this hole saw it's going to create a lot of debris to float um, down between the fuel cell and this bilge area and I don't want it to plug up this hole even before we uh, you know get the boat going so what I'm going to do is pull the fuel cell out get all this old hose out of the way well before we do that we obviously we need to make sure it's in the approximate area so you you want to make sure you can make the bend like we have here and we've already kind of done that so we can we can do it roughly right about here and we should be just fine the newer hose oh just so you're aware and it's roughly about 90 degree you try to do that same thing with this one it does it but it's not very happy about it so anyway trick instead of going with a two inch hole saw do about two and one eighth this would be standard even on your boat you'll it's the same size the fuel fill line so two and one eighth and then for your vent line which you also need a vent line as well if you go with a one inch it'll there's plenty of room in there and if you want to see that same with, with this one you'll have the same amount of play it's kind of flared at the end here but there we go yeah just plenty of room 
So that's what we're going to use, two and one eighth and one inch. And I will drill the bigger one on this side, smaller one on that side. There's also going to be another line for the actual fuel as well. It's going to have a, a light bend and I'm probably going to drill the hole. It's, I'm actually just going to use one of these standard guys here, three quarter inch. And I'll probably hit it right here. More than likely, I'm going to keep this capped for now because I, there's going to be an access plate when the floor is created and I'll be able to get this hole. Uh, sorry, I'll be able to get access to this hole right here. So I'm, I'm going to drill it, pre-drill it all and all that good stuff ahead of time. But I will I'll keep that capped until we get the uh, motor set in here. And it won't be hard to access this little guy here. And I'll be able to take my hand and make sure so we'll make a we'll make a pretty good 90 figure probably like a few inches out so maybe come out about right here and the the fuel pump is more on this side anyway so the further you get it over the better off you'll be anyway another question I got from last video is why not run and this is too short obviously why not run a brace directly in the middle and the reason is it blocks off your um, fuel inputs here. Even if we try to set it on top, it's still too high. You could probably go a little bit, you could probably go right to the side of it like this. It's not quite in the middle. It's off a little bit. But what I did here is you look, I got two pieces of marine grade plywood cut at, I believe this is two and a half inches. And instead of running it long ways, we're gonna run it, let's give you a quick preview. I think it's right at about 17 inches. See if we can get it to stay it's like that. I'll need to, need to make sure it's measured um, and straight from here to there and from here to there as well. I'll measure that out, but Likely that's what I'm going to do and draw in two stainless steel screws to try to catch one on this one, one on that. Same on this side. Keep in mind too, there's going to be directly above where the fuel access port is, is a seat. So they won't, there won't be any kind of activity happening here. But I do want to give the flooring that goes over top of it the opportunity to not sag so even though it's not load bearing right here per se because it'll it's going to be like a 72 inch bench that goes across it's going to catch these but it wouldn't hurt to be able to distribute it across these two stringers so that's likely what I'm going to do and you notice below we've got I want to say it's like a half inch is what I measured out so it does it does have room for a little bit of flex if it does flex low enough to hit this tube it's probably a bad day anyway but anyway yeah there's inch and a half of marine grade plywood so it's going to take quite a lot for that to flex probably end up breaking the uh, stringers on each side before that happens so that is the plan with the cross brace I kind of debated on whether I was going to use a a piece of Douglas fir or not and and nah, let's let's just I got plenty of plywood laying around. Let's just use that instead. And then obviously we've we've cut these pieces here. Move that fuel line out of the way. And what we'll do is we will just double up, we'll match up where these are here. And I'll likely take some screws ahead of time and drill these through. And more than likely, we'll, we'll need to make sure we cut off the ends, too, ahead of time so they don't stick out. Keep in mind, too, it's not a big deal. We already have tabbing. So here's some things to consider. You already have tabbing down here to hold this piece. The big debate is this is, this is a piece that's going to help brace the um, stringer here. Is that important? And I'm going to err on the side of caution and say, yeah, it is. So I'm actually going to sink these in with two stainless steel screws and then I will do the full um, setup here so to speak after I get the screws put in 
and I will actually put in some epoxy thickening agent along these sides and more than likely Kevlar these in just to give it that much more strength. I've got a little bit of extra Kevlar laying around so I don't mind doing a little bit extra work especially if it's going to help with this fuel uh, and keeping it stable and I know this is going to be one of the um, strength points so to speak. We'll have four of them and you'll see there's a board on that side one over there as well and this this little guy so anyway without further ado what I will do now is go ahead and remove this fuel cell do these cutouts here with the uh, the hole saw and we'll get we'll be that much closer hopefully we can get this fuel cell permanently attached today and that would be perfect so if you got any other questions like I said before just post them in that comments field we'll definitely take a look at them as the videos progress here but we're moving quite a uh, we're moving quite well through the series all right so you can see our holes that we've got for the fuel line this is the main filler two and one eighth one inch and then for the part that goes to the carburetor that's three quarters I'll go ahead and actually sand the grain in here as well along these edges. Make sure we've got nothing but smooth edges here. And then we're actually going to go ahead and seal with the epoxy uh, thickening compound. Uh, actually, no, just the epoxy, rather. We're just going to put the epoxy in here to seal this uh, end grain. Make sure there's no water. That If it does get in this area, it doesn't rot the wood from here down. So that's going to be our goal. It came out pretty good. If you notice, too, we have all the lines where they run along this engine mount. And then eventually what we'll do is we'll take a zip tie capture them all together as they come out in this manner here so it, it actually basically holds together as one that's why I kind of made this in a tight-knit group and this way there's not a lot of bouncing inside of this little area and, and we can keep all those lines together all right so you can see as well on this side we've attached the pieces of marine grade plywood that's going to help strengthen where the fuel cell mounts. This is just added support to create an extra inch and a half. That's going to be uh, really good in the long term because then it, it, you won't have any problems with uh, too much flex going on. If it, if it was just a stringer we may run into some problems. And the other thing to mention here, I notice as I had the fuel cell in place the neoprene actually wasn't doing anything as I was running it along these edges over here. I know it doesn't look right, but I'm working with one hand here. Anyway, there we go. Like I had one right there, one in the middle, and one on this side. And actually notice these, you could just simply move over. They weren't being used at all. Same thing with the one on the right side. It wasn't being used. What I did was I actually reached under the fuel cell and there was a good, you know, two inch plus underneath the hole here and here. The only part the fuel cell was touching was the very bottom. So as you can imagine the sensible thing to do would be to make a channel as the water comes out of that drain hole. It can kind of channel underneath the fuel cell and boom right to this drain hole. Kind of smart right? Kind of maybe keeps the water from uh, going over the sides although this is this does have a grade as you can't see it on the camera it will every it'll keep everything drained towards the center but this is kind of a neat little design to kind of help channel the water underneath the fuel cell and that's what I'm going to do I'm basically going to keep it lined up like this because there's no sense in putting the neoprene on this side and this side completely waste I actually had it over there and you can just slide it right over to the middle it was waste anyway so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish putting the epoxy thickening compound along these edges and then I'm going to wrap these with uh, Kevlar just to give it a little bit more strength and then we'll fill along the bottom as well to give it some extra strength. That's going to pretty much do it for this video. As you see the video progress here, we're going to have the fuel cell reinstalled. We'll have that cross brace installed over it and then this is this is um, pretty much going to be it. After we're done putting the fuel cell in here, we'll go ahead and start with the 
start putting the flooring in because there's really nothing else to do once the fuel cell's in place. Uh, from that point forward, it's just putting the flooring on. So that's that's where the fun starts. Once you get the flooring in, it, it's kind of sad in a way because all this work that we, we did underneath, you won't be able to see it anymore. Uh, it's kind of interesting. We spent almost 50 episodes cutting, removing, reinstalling, all this tabbing, all these stringers and bulkheads in place, and only to hide it. You'll never see it. So that's good. It's The strength is uh, basically coming from within and underneath the boat itself as it connects to the hull. So that's kind of the important piece as we're as we're progressing here but yeah it's kind of sad you won't you won't be able to see any of this very soon but then again we'll be that much closer to getting this thing on the water and having it tested let's make sure obviously there's no leaks and stuff I don't suppose there would be but you never know you still got to do a function check at the end of the day and it also brings a point where we're going to be installing the motor again so for all my Volvo Penta and OMC fans you'll be able to see the engine being reinstalled and the gimbal bearing uh, being removed. I've still got some maintenance to do on that. So all in all, I'm probably anticipating likely about maybe 75 episodes on this. So if you've been watching from day one, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. As always, smash that like button if you thought this was a cool video. Leave me some comments if you got some question about your project. And as always, hit that subscribe button. Hit me up anytime if you got any questions. Have a good one, everybody.